gentlemen, welcome to TFI Cudgeb's Read up been away for the last couple of weeks, that's why it's been a bit quiet. I've been away working in Australia land, but we're back. So to get back into the swing of it, because I'm a little bit out of practice, we're going to just start with a nice little simple, uh, brackets-ish, simple-ish tutorial. A uh, nice easy-going tutorial of this impossible dovetail puzzle, which I found uh, whilst I was away on a channel called Clickspring. Now, one of my viewers pointed me towards this channel a couple of months ago. Uh, it's a guy who has his own workshop, he's created his own YouTube channel, and everything that he, this guy does is next level. It's just perfection. From the video quality to the stuff that he makes is phenomenal. Highly recommend you go and check this channel out. It is amazing. It is really educational. It's just fascinating to watch how stuff's made, and he does it to the highest of quality from what I can see. So go check him out. Right, so I don't think this guy, I'm pretty sure obviously this guy didn't inc didn't uh, invent the, the impossible dovetail joint, but he's made quite a nice ad adaptation of it. So the, the dovetail joint is a, it's obviously a woodworking joint, uh, and the impossible dovetail is two pieces which are seemingly impossible to put together in manufacture, but there's a trick to it. The puzzle is that the two pieces slide out like so. So you slide them together, and then there's a pin that goes through the middle to lock them together. So the puzzle is you remove the pin, then you slide them away from each other. Where whilst most people, the puzzle is that you know people will be pulling them apart, trying to remove uh, the that section of the dovetail uh, just straight up rather than sliding. So that that's the that's the thing. But it's a good little puzzle. It's a good little model to knock up an inventor as a tutorial. It's relatively simple. So I thought, let's start with this. Let's start with this. Right, so as with most of my tutorials, I am making this up as I go along. So I couldn't tell you right now what we're going to learn as we go. We're just going to do it. <laughs> so it's pretty much, why change the habit of a lifetime? Right, let's go. So it's not, this is not really a stop at every point and explain what I'm doing type of thing. This is just, you can just follow me as, you, as I go, right? Just follow me. I'll try and go as slow as I can within reason without dragging it out for too long. Uh, but just follow as I go and you can sort of learn as you go. Right, so we're going to start a new IPT file, right? New inventor part. Then we're going to create a new sketch, new 2D sketch, and drop it on the XY plane, right? We're using Inventor 2016 here, by the way. And uh, you can, I can't imagine I'll be doing anything. I don't think I'll be doing, I'll try not to do anything that won't be available on earlier versions of Inventor. But I can't promise that because I don't know what I'm going to do. So we're going to go for the XY plane, right? Let's, uh, let's look front on. I don't have any sizes, right? I've no idea what sizes this guy's used. I don't think it matters, right? I don't think there is a set size or or anything really. It doesn't matter. Mm. You can check out his, uh, his website. I think he does host files which you can pay for and download them straight away. Uh, but, you know, right, let's just make this up as well. So 150 by 150, I think that's probably ish about what size that is. If you look at his hands, 150 mil, maybe a bit bigger, but it doesn't matter. Right, 150 by 150. Let's uh, finish that. And let's just to be proper, let's edit that dimension. Let's double click him and then link these two together. Right. So if we do decide later on to change that, the both change. Right. Let's just let's just be proper about this. Let's do it right. So finish the sketch. Right. I'm using a 3D connection mouse here. Right. That's why it's sort of moving and orbiting around whilst uh, I'm not pressing any buttons. Go check out 3D Connection Mice if you've no idea what that is. I was When I was in Australia, I genuinely, right, no word of a lie, I was staggered to come across a guy who's used Inventor for over 10 years and he'd no idea what a 3D mouse was. I was staggered. Uh, but that's a thing. But if you want to zoom in all, but you can use this button here, obviously, and then just do this. That That's a thing. You can do that. You don't need a 3D mouse. They're just, they're just extremely convenient. Right, then we're going to extrude. We're going to pick the, the square, and then we're going to extrude it up by 150. Let's just keep it completely square. 150 both ways. So we're going 75s and 75, and then okay. Right, so there's my block. Right, how we're going to do this. Right, well, I think what we'll start by doing is defining the profile of the dovetail itself. I think the way I'm going to approach this is I want to create a multi-bodied solid. The end result will be an assembly, but I'm going to model it as a part file because it's quite a tricky piece, right? It's going to be, ex it would be extraordinarily difficult to model this up as two separate parts and then bring them together. So the, the bottom up approach would be extremely difficult. So we're kind of going top down. That's where we're going. We're going to start with a part and then we're, no, we're not, we are going bottom up. I, I, re, I, I'm jet lagged. I, honestly, that, that's where my brain is right now. I, I literally can't even add up two numbers, but we'll carry on, right? So we're going to do 2D sketch. Then we're going to drop the 2D sketch on the side face. And this is where we're going to define the profile of the dovetail, right? So we'll project geometry. Let's project this side face here, right? And that just gives us something to snap onto. So that 
burns the edge of the cube onto our sketch and it just like i said gives us something to snap onto now because we're going to be we're going to be uh using a 3d feature here of a profile i think it might be a good idea to make these construction lines so just highlight them all and then hit that button there and that turns them into construction lines and that just makes sure that later on inventor doesn't try to use those edges with any 3d features right so let's let's sketch out the dovetail profile so we can just do this approximately right we can just guess it right just guess it for now roughly sketch it out and then we'll uh, we'll put the dimensions on later so let's say from there to there whilst you're sketching make sure you if you've got a line that you know is horizontal just snap right just snap and then snap there you go you can see the tracking vector come along and then snap reese so there's the ish dovetail joint right that's the ish profile of that joint there let's jump back to uh then right so there we go there we've got a i mean let's go back to a better picture that's a good picture right so just looking at the size if that's about 150 mil that would say that's about a third of the way up so i would say about 50 mil maybe 45 to 50 mil in terms of the the start of the of the bottom piece right so let's go for that right before we start putting sizes in though let's let's get the constraints down let's get the geometrical constraints down so we'll do a line and then we'll make this a center line and we'll just snap that at the green dot in the middle and then snap that at the green dot at the top, right? And that puts us a center line. The reason I'm going for that center line is because I need to get all of this sort of stuff centralized and these two lines here need to be symmetrical because it is a symmetrical joint. So we can do that sort of stuff. So let it, let us let us do a uh, constraint, a coincident constraint between the middle of that line to that, right? So that, that bops that middle of that line smack bang on the center and let's go symmetry symmetric constraint between that and that and then that so that makes those two lines symmetrical around the center line uh, so that's the geometrical constraints done actually that's all we need to do so for the sizes right dimension from here to here so well, that was nearly there actually let's make it 45 let's say 45 that'll do Right, and because we made the constraints as we went, when we were sketching it out roughly, this line here is automatically, I think it's a coaxial constraint, it's coaxially constraint to that line there. So they're always in line with each other, these two here. And then I think, let's just go back to the, the actual uh, duft. So from there to about there, well, if, that, if I've made that 45, that gap there looks slightly smaller. So let's say, let's say 40, let's start with 40 and see what that looks like. So dimension from here, to here uh, 40 and then let's put a couple of angles in let's say oh shit no that's not good no let's undo that let's say uh, 80 that look about right yeah it'll do it'll do uh, right and then the final constraint I'm not actually sure I'm assuming it's the length of this line here that's the way you do this if you're not entirely sure you know you've still got unconstrained entities and you're like well where does it need a dimension just hold the left mouse button down oh, make sure you're not in the dimension command hold the left mouse button down on the line and just pull it and yeah yeah it's the length of that line so let's go back and again that looks quite wide actually so let's say maybe 55 perhaps ish 55 let's see what happens when we put that on so dimension there 55 no it needs to be a bit bigger than that let's go for 60 uh, it could probably be a bit bigger, but like I said, it doesn't really matter. And that's the sketch done, right? So we've got the profile of the dovetail joint done. Now I'm thinking, I'm thinking here, all right, let's finish this sketch. I'm thinking I'm going to sweep this. So I want to sweep this and I'm going to split the block using the sweep. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a work plane. So you hit this button here and then you want to put a work plane. Uh, it probably doesn't matter w what level the work plane goes here. But I want to I want to intersect the work plane, right there, at the same angle as that. So that gives us a sketch plane at the same level as the bottom of the dovetail joint there, right. So then we're going to sketch on that work plane, and then I'm going to project this little dot here, and then I'm going to snap a line to that point, and then whack it out to about there, right. So this is the path in which I want to sweep this dovetail joint along. At this point. Right, I know I've got in my head where I'm going with this. At this point, you're probably thinking I have absolutely no clue what you're doing here. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I, I just kind of get these. I've, I get a vision, and that's, it, com it comes with experience. And 
you get a vision of where you want the model to go and you just kind of stampede your way towards it. And if it doesn't work, then you just stop the video and you start again, I guess. <laughs> or you undo it and start again, I don't know. Right, but I think I know where I'm going. So we're going to create uh, uh, an angular constraint. Uh, no, not angular constraint, a dimension between there and then... Oh, we haven't got anything to snap to, have we? No, right, so what we need to do is create a construction line. So hit line, hit the construction line button, and then we want to snap to the green dot. So that's sort of our origin for this sketch. And then go along there. The length of this line really doesn't matter. Then dimension between there and there. And then make this 45 degrees. Right, because it is a it is a 45, I think it's 45 degrees anyway. Um, when you look at the when you look at the block opened up, uh, that, that angle there, this is what this is where that line's going. Although I'm starting the sweep pattern from there going like that, I think that is, that looks like 45 degrees it might might not be, it might be about 30, I don't know, it doesn't, it still doesn't matter, it doesn't matter uh, you can make, I mean once you finish this you could actually make it if you wanted to, you could 3D print it but, you know, it's not actually going to be used to, to hold furniture together by any means, so it doesn't really matter if it's not entirely accurate, anyway, right we've got that line done, right, that line's done let's hit finish sketch and then uh, let's turn this work plane off, I don't like leaving work, oh hello I don't like leaving work planes on. They get in the way. And then we're going to sweep. So we're going to go for sweep. And then we want to pick the option for a surface. And then we're sweeping this here. And then the path is that there. There we are. Right. So that's going to give us a swept surface through the block. You might now be able to see where I'm going with this. If not, then just, just persevere. Just bear with me. Right. We're going to click OK. Then what I'm going to do, right, because that's just one that's just one side. We're going to click circular pattern, that, and the rotation axis is going to be the origin Z axis, right? That's the center line right the way through the block. Now you only this this highlights the need to make your sketches symmetrical when you first start a model because you can now use these axes and these planes as sort of rotation pivot points and center lines and whatnot. So we're going to make two and then we're going to click OK. So we're, set, we're circling this around the z-axis times two placement. Boom. There we go. All right, and that gives us this. Then what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, I think I need to join these two together. Right, so we're going to stitch, right? So we're going to stitch, right? I know stitch, yes. What the hell is stitch? Basically stitch, right? We've got two surfaces here, right? One surface, two surfaces. Stitch joins or combines the surfaces together to create one object. So we're going to then use that one object, I think, because I'm hoping it works. We're going to use these two surfaces to cut this block. So we're going to stitch that and that together. And then uh, uh, what happened there? Did I? I think I might have dragged, right? So stitch that and that. There we go. Apply. And then done. And then you should get stitch surface. And that's just now one. Yeah, that's just one surface now. Right. And then this is the moment of truth, I think. I'm ready to do this. So we're going to go for split. Right, split is something which I need to create a separate tutorial for because it is a it is a really useful command. It's so much use. But we're going to go split. We're going to split solid. The split tool is going to be the stitched surface. And we're, we're using this as like a guillotine to cut this solid. Hit apply. Hit cancel. Right click on the stitched surface and turn that off. And look at that. Yeah, that's, that's actually worked a treat. Right, so now what we should have in solid bodies, solid two and then solid three. So the bottom half and top half, right? You can rename these. So we'll just rename this to uh, bottom piece. And then this one here is going to be the top piece. And what we should be able to do really in theory is just right click on the top piece and then, oh, look at that. That has worked an absolute treat. So let's go back there. So that bit is that bit. So let's just look at that. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much bang on. Let's just orientate it to about there. Yep. Yep, bang on. Right, I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's the bottom and the top piece done. The next thing you could do, uh, you, could do the sh you could do the chamfers. He's got a couple of, basically towards the end of his video. And I, I obviously highly recommend that you watch the video from start to finish because it shows you when machining it. It shows you the, the tools that he uses to make it. Uh, but you can see he's got a he's got a couple of chamfers uh, around here. He took a, like a file and just shaved off the the sharp edges. You could do that if you want to. And there's also a, a slight bit of 
uh, well, there needs to be, doesn't there? There needs to be a bit of clearance between the two pieces or else they're not going to be able to slide together. So to achieve that, what you could do, what you could do, right, let's turn off the top. Where would I shave this off? I need to shave some material off. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, right, let's turn that on. Let's shave a bit of material off the bottom piece. Right, so let's turn off the top piece and let's use thicken. Uh, and it needs to be just absolutely minimal. So let's say 0 point, 0 0.1 mil. Uh, actually, maybe 0 0.2 mil. 0 0.1 mil is a bit unrealistic. Let's say 0 0.2 mil. And we're going to shave... Who? And then we're going to shave some material off that, that, and then that. But we want to go inwards, right? Because thicken usually creates material. You can see what it's doing there is it's going to thicken this these faces up, so it's going to add 0 0.2, but if you switch direction, it's going to actually remove 0 0.2 mil material, and that gives you like a bit of clearance between two objects. So you hit apply, boom, look at that. Look at that, right, so that's that's that bit done, and then we're going to do the same here, there, there, and there. Oh, shit. Uh, one there. And then just zoom in, just make sure it is still going the right way. Yes, it is. Hit apply, boom. Okay, right, let's turn on the top piece now, and we should see some clearance. Yeah, yep, 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 happy with that. Right, you could also make a bit of clearance on the, you know, on this, on the bottom surface. So let's turn off the top piece again. So you can maybe, maybe thicken that down a little bit. And I'm not going to, though, I'm not going to, because really what they would sort of, these, these, the top and the bottom face would slide together. It's just these pieces here that you would need a bit of clearance on. So I'm, I'm happy to leave it at that. Okay, so that's the top piece done, right? So let's... Let's turn them both back on. The next thing we need to do is create the hole for the locking pin. Now, this is pretty simple. Just create a sketch on top of the face here. And then you could you could you could just draw a circle and then extrude a circle through. But if you want to be a if you want to be a baller, right, you, you can do it properly. You may put a point there. It's just a sketch point there, and then start up the, the hole command, and you can say, right, well, this is going to be just a simple hole. It's going to be drilled all the way through, and then it's you know, six, I don't know, I don't even know what it was, maybe 12 mil. I don't know. Uh, well, he has made it there, has he? Uh, you can see it's it's quite big, isn't it? It's quite a big drill piece that he's using to, to puncture that through. So let's say, let's say fifteen. So bigger still, isn't it? Twenty. Ah, oh, that'll do. That'll do. Twenty mil through wall. Uh, it's obviously not tapped. So let's just okay. And there you go. Oh, sugar sugar puffs, right? Because this is a multi-solid body. What we need to do is we need to edit the feature and we need to tell the hole command to pierce the hole through both solids. By default, it's just piercing the hole. It's drilling the hole through the top solid, but we need to say, well, no, include this one as well. So it includes both of those pieces as it's drilling the hole. Right, that's done. All right, then. Okay, what next? Uh, well, we could do the pin. Uh, you, I mean, the, the, the pin isn't... It's not really a purchased part. The guy's made it himself. Again, in the video, you can see that he's, um, towards the end, he's using all kinds of, he uses a big metal rod, actually. He makes it out of a big metal rod, and then he starts polishing it and buffing it and chiseling it and all kinds of things. It's really quite fascinating to see it getting made. But there it is there. That's the finished piece. So it's it's not anything that you're going to get out of Inventor's Content Center, so we could probably do with just making it ourselves. So, so let's make this ourselves. Let's create a new sketch on top of here. Uh, let's project through the edge of the hole and then let's just draw a circle say so big and then a bit of clearance Well, I'll stick with 0 0.2 so there's going to be 0 0.2 mil clearance between the pin and the block finish the sketch extrude that uh, to that face there so that's going to be the length of the pin the pin is always going to be however long this or however tall I guess the block is so in the future if you did decide to change the size which was 150 by 150 uh, then the pin will always adapt to suit the length of the uh, the block so that's that and then click uh, make sure you oh you've got to click this button here new solid and then click OK new solid make sure that you do get an actual new solid body representing the pin or else it'll just blend the pin together with one of the top of the bottom pieces which you don't want so we're going to say uh, this is going to be the locking pin there we go right and then we need to create the head for it right so this is going to be a little bit is it going to be tricky how we're going to approach this right let's um let let us let, let um, right let's create a sketch on here 
uh, finish that straight away. And the way I do these things isn't necessarily always the best way, right? It, it isn't. It's just how things just, just come to me in my head. Uh, and it gets the job done. And most times, I would say 9.5 times out of 10, I do things with future-proofing them in mind. So if stuff, I'm not butchering it, I'm not shortcutting it, I just might not necessarily do it the absolute perfect, efficient way. But never mind, right? So we're going to create a plane uh, intersecting that point there, and then it's going to be aligned with the XZ plane. And then we're going to sketch on here. F7, boom. So that slices the graphics, and we can get rid of the work plane so it's out of the way. Okie dokie. Right, so uh, right, right, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? Right, so we need to create the profile for the dome. Uh, that needs to be like a sort of half circle. So let's draw a line from here coming out to about here, perhaps. Oh shit, that's not even straight, is it? Uh, line from here uh, out to about here. Right. In terms of sizes, I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. Uh, let's say, oh, 20 mil, actually, looks, maybe looks about right. We can change this later on, but let's say 20 mil looks about right. And let's go up to about here. Again, I have no idea what the height of the pin is. It's just really whatever, whatever looks right. And then finally, we're going to do an arc from here to here. And then sort of like that. That'll do. Yeah, that'll do. And then... Yeah, this is the thing that I'm not really. I, there's probably a more efficient way to do this, but because I know I'm going to revolve this into a circle, this arc here needs to, like, tangent, tangentially, ta tan. Was that right? Tangential. It needs to be tangent at the top for it to be a perfect revolve. So what I do is I do I draw like a temporary construction line there, and then I tangent the arc to that. Boom. So that makes sure that that hits that line at a perfect tangent. And then let's uh, do this, maybe eight mil. Oh, shit. Oh, that's not good. So we need to constrain that to the... Oh, well, that's why, because that dot's not even projected. Right, so we need to project that dot there. So that gives us that point. And then I'm pressing escape, by the way. When, when you can hear a click, that's pressing escape. And then I'm going to coincident that point there to that point there. Boom, there we go. Right, that's fully constrained. Splendid. Finish the sketch. And then we're going to revolve that axis is that and then the solid is going to be the locking pin and then okay right so that's the pin that that looks ridiculous it looks too long and too flat do i care yes i do so let us let us let us let us make that a little bit higher let's say 10 and make that maybe 18 finish that that's a bit better right so let's turn off the bottom and the top piece just Control, click both of them, visibility, and there's our pin, right? I know it doesn't look anything like that. It's not a shiny, but it's close, isn't it? It's close. It'll do. It'll do. In terms of textures, we're going to apply the textures in a bit. That's when it starts to look more realistic. But for now, that's as long as we've got the form and the function okay, then we're good. Right. There we go. There we go. Right. For chamfers, right, the chamfer command, if you do want to get rid of the hard corners, the chamfer command is a pain in the arse in Inventor. It's not as anywhere near as uh, efficient and as slick as fillet. So you can't do like select all or anything like that. You can't even window select. You've got to click edges at a time. That's why I can't really be bothered to do it. Uh, but I think the guy did chamfer these corners, so we might as well just do these. So we'll do the outer edges of the block, because I guess that's where people pick it up, isn't it? That's where your hands go. So we'll get rid of these hard corners. That, 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 and that. This is, this is how slow it is. Autodesk really need to do something with the chamfer command. Uh, it's not really a priority, though, is it? And it's that, is that all the, that's all the corners of the cube, uh, all the edges of the cube. And then in terms of a distance, uh, it's not really two mil, is it? Where's this block gone? There it is. There. I'd say about one mil. I'd say one mil do the job, right? One mil. There we go. Okay. Right, so there's the chamfers put on. Okay, right, we're going to save this. Let's save this into uh, enemy workspace. So this is going to be the uh, imp impos dovetail part. Right, you'll have noticed that this has been modeled up as a single part all the way along, but it's an assembly. So what we've got to do now is we explode the part out into an assembly. And the way we do that is by hitting manage, and then we go to make components. So this is going to make an assembly from the part. What? Yeah, it's pretty clever. It converts your multi-bodies, so body one, body two, body three, and it turns it into an assembly with part one, part two, part three. But all along, even afterwards, 
the IPT is the master component. You make a change to the IP. Oh, you'll see it happen in the future, right? You'll see it happen. Right, so you hit Make Components, and then you click that, that, and then that. So that includes all three multi-bodies in this assembly. So the target assembly name, well, that's going to be called Impost Dovetail. Uh, we'll just call that Impost Dovetail.iam. Save it into my workspace folder. Yes, that'll do. The bomb structure is normal. That doesn't really matter because we're not sending it out to any clients or any uh, fabricators, nothing like that. So we don't really need a bill of materials for it. Then click Next. Uh, I think we're going to accept all of this stuff. We don't need to... I'll tell you what we'll untick. Untick Use Color Override from Source Component. Because you can you can assign textures to the multi-bodies. And that will then filter through into the assembly. But I've personally found it more manageable to apply the colors in the assembly rather than in the part. It's entirely up to you. You can do both ways. You can mess around with it. It's up to you. Click OK. And uh, I'll say, uh, right, you'll probably not get that. That's just a vault prompt. There we go. There's the there's the assembly. So we've now got an assembly called the Possible Dovetail, part one, part two, and then part three. What it's done as well is it has const it's grounded them all. So there's no constraints here. Now, if you want to be, if you want to be an absolute pro, and you want to be a ledge, you can constrain this to mimic real life movement, right? I tell you what, it's a tutorial. Fuck it, let's do it. So we're gonna pick up the locking pin and the top piece, right? And we're gonna we're gonna unground them. So we're gonna leave the bottom piece grounded, right? How am I gonna do this? Um, right, 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 right. I tell you what you could do. What you could do if you wanted to just test this, right? Let's turn off the locking pin for now, right? If, let's turn off the lock and pin, right? Let's put that and then that. So hold down control, pick these both up, right click and then click contact set on the right click menu. Go to inspect and then activate the contact solver. And what you should find, providing that we've done this right, you should be able to slide it along like that. Look at that. See how it's, look at that. That is working an absolute treat. And you can, oh shit. Oop, there it is, slotted back into place. Come on, this is where Inventor's contact solver gets a bit jiggly. There we go, all the way through. Yeah, it is working like an absolute charm. So you can see it's sort of making contact as it's going in, but you just got to... Ah, nah, that's well and truly goose. Right, then you just press Control and Z, and that'll just undo it back into position. There we go. Right then. So, yeah, that's... I guess that's it, really. I mean, you could, you could constrain it in place properly, uh, how would we do that? How would we do that? Right, which way is this sliding? Right, that's sliding that way. So, let us uh, edit this part here, and then create a work plane. Click work plane between that face and that face there. Right, so that that's given us a scent line uh, going in the direction of travel. Return. Do the same in this part here. Double click that part there. That's the bottom piece. Work plane there to there. Return. Uh, constrain mate you want to flush between that work plane and then that work plane there hit apply okay and what that does that just makes sure is when now when you when you're sliding it the parts don't separate along that axis so it, it now can just go dead quick so it's not actually making contact between these two faces here so that just works a lot better anyway should be able to just come on there you go in like that Right, Control Z. Let's put it back into place. There right, we are. And then, if you want to actually get it legit, right, one hundred percent legit, you can turn your lock and pin back on. Uh, put that back in there, and then put the lock and pin on the contact set as well. And now this ain't going to go anywhere until you pull the pin out like that. And then, <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Right, that's uh, that's the lock and pin working. Uh, the lock and pin itself isn't constrained though, so. Oh, it is actually. Well, no, it's not. It's not constrained. It's just it's it's in the hole, based on the being a contact set, right? So it can't move either side because of because of contact. So what we really should do is put a constraint between uh, the center of the locking pin and the center of the hole, and then I suppose we can leave it at that. And then you could just pull it down until it hits that there. But you can see the whole block starting to move now, so we really don't want to do that. Let's just constrain it properly between, uh, let's do a, an insert, insert constraint between that edge and then there, apply, Great. and there you go, that's your impossible dovetail joint complete.
Well, it's not great. It's, yeah, let's turn these. Away. Let's let's put some colours on it, right? Let's just finish off with some with some nice colours. So the lock and pin, all right? Let's uh, let's 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 open that up separately, right? Let's put the let's put the textures on it away from the assembly, just so there's no interference. Uh, in terms of a material, I mean, if you want to, if you want to like understand what kind of weight this thing is, then you can apply materials and a texture. So let's let's hit the material drop down list and let's go for. Uh, I think he made it out of. He did. He did say. I think it's just a steel rod, isn't it? So you could just say steel. Christ, look how many bloody steels there are. Let's just say steel car. Uh, steel. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't really matter. And then for material, it's it's pretty shiny. He's got it pretty pretty polished. So let's go for chrome. Chrome polished. Oh, look at that. That's looking juicy. And we'll save that. Uh, okay. And then that's uh, that's the lock and pin done. Right, so uh, which uh, which half's half, which right? So the bottom half's the bronze one, and the top half's the brushed aluminium one. So let's start with the top one, brushed aluminium. So let's open that up. And um, the materials that you get will be dependent on what library you've got active. So I'm using the invent uh, the Autodesk Appearance Library. Uh, if you're using the uh, the Inventor Appearance Library, then you won't you won't get as many. I think I've turned off the inventor appearance. I, I don't. But use the Autodesk appearance library if you've got it, if you've got it, because you get a lot more colours and a lot more textures with that, right? So let's start with uh it's brushed, isn't it? So let's go for brushed. Is there anything brushed in here? Uh brushed just brushed? Ugh. Well, that's more close to the bottom one, isn't it? Let's change that. Uh, aluminium. Is it, there used to be just one called brushed aluminium. Where's that gone? It's just not there anymore, is it? That does that displeases me? Neil is most displeased. Autodesk, where's brushed aluminium gone? Uh, chrome polished, brushed. I, su I suppose. Yeah. I think the brush marks are a bit thick. So what we can do then is we'll just edit the texture. All right? Did all right? We didn't use that one, so we can get rid of that one. So chrome polished, brushed. Edit that. And then we need to change the uh, we need to change the relief pattern. So we we'll click this swatch here, and then the, pattern, the sample size is twelve. Let's put six in. So it's about half it. Yeah, that's about right, isn't it? And uh, I'll do All right. The direction of the brush is right. Uh, the relief pattern zero point ten. What does that do? Not much. I'll right, we'll just leave that. Uh, I'll do. That'll do. It looks about right. So that's the top half done. Let's save him. Close that down. And let's... Why is that? Oh, right, now it's updated. Like, what the hell is going on? Right, that's that's okay. I'm sure the brush sizes were changing there. Never mind, I don't care. So let's open up the bottom part. And change the... We didn't do the material on the top half, did we? No, we, need to we changed the texture, but not the material. So let's make this... Uh, it's made out of bronze. Uh, uh, brass. Bronze. Bronze is a colour. Brass. So we'll say brass. Uh, just brass. And then for the texture, I want to use that brushed texture that we used first time around. Brushed. There we go. Uh, however, I'm not happy again with the pattern size there. So let's edit the brushed texture and let's click the swatch and change it Oof, 24 that's quite big right let's just drop that down to six same size as the other one uh, six by six and okay well, I mean we could go and add a bump map to it and all that kind of thing but it just doesn't matter really for the purposes of what we're doing doesn't matter and then okay yeah we'll go in the content right uh, and then we can turn off the work plane. So we've, we've assigned the material to this, haven't we? So we can save that. Uh, shut that down. And then, there you go. I mean, yeah, yeah. We need to assign the material to the top half. So let's open up the top half and change this to... It's just a block of aluminium that he's got. So we'll just say aluminium. Or aluminium, as uh, the incorrect Americans call it. Way. There we go. All done. So there's your impossible dovetail joint. And if you want to make it look dapper... Uh, you can put your shadows on, and you can, you know, oh shit, and the ground's wrong, right? So if the shadow ends up on the wrong spot, which uh, it clearly has, just hit uh, one face of the cube like that, and then just as long as you're looking at it side on, right-click on that face of the cube and set the current view as uh, front, and that'll put the shadows on the bottom. 
shadows are on, reflections are on, perspective, realistic. And then you can put it in a in a grey room or something. You know. It's it's inventor, it's never gonna look brilliant, is it? But there you go, there's your dovetail joint. All done. So along the way along the way we learned we learned uh, how to sweep, uh, stitch, bit of surface modeling, bit of patterning, uh, multi bodied solids, explosions into assemblies. So we did quite a bit there actually, didn't we? That was that was pretty good. I'm happy with that. Happy with that. Right, so now at the end result is you've got your dovetail assembly, which actually does have a parts list of sorts with it. So there's your parts list. Uh, you can go to the parts only. And you've got your bottom piece, your top piece, and then the locking pin. So those are the three pieces that make this up. And that is driven. Notice that when you do open up each one of these parts, by the way, there is no modeling features here because these parts are driven by the original component that you, you modeled up using features so what you do what you do if you want to change the assembly you change it from within here so this is like the it's like a skeletal model it's driving the assembly uh, anything you change here will immediately update and change well it doesn't I think you might have to hit the update button but it filters through into this uh, final assembly all right then that's the impossible dovetail done nice little tutorial to get us back into the swing of things uh, if you found that useful, do please press like. If you learned something along the way, that would be great if you just let me know because uh, I'm sort of still looking for things to do that apply to a lot of people and people can learn from. I do get a lot of requests for, for quite specific niche things and I'm like, I can't really do that. It's so specific to what you're doing that it's not really going to help anybody else. So um, I'm, I'm up for suggestions. Uh, I can't guarantee that I'll do them, but I'm up for suggestions anyway. So thank you very much, guys. Like, comment, uh, subscribe if you haven't done already. Uh, until next time, toodles.